This morning, the desperate search for two Perth brothers missing in Mexico. Up to a million Australians at risk of identity theft after a major data breach at pubs and clubs. Support for victims of domestic violence as the nation mourns. And a major power outage. Hundreds of residents left in the dark after a dramatic smash in Cajarina. This is 7 Morning News, live from Perth with Lockie Byrne. Good morning, thanks for your company. An urgent search is underway this morning for two Perth brothers who have gone missing while on a surfing trip overseas. Their family has taken to social media to appeal for help. Rachel Tassica has the latest. There's a desperate search for two brothers from Perth who are on a surfing trip in Mexico and haven't been heard from since Saturday. Family back in Perth raised the alarm, saying they haven't been able to reach Jake or Callum Robinson for days, which is out of character. It's understood the brothers, both aged in their 30s, booked an Airbnb for Sunday but never checked in. Their mum has posted to social media appealing for help to track her sons down. It's believed they've gone missing in the Baja, California region. Callum is a diabetic and there's concerns for his health. It's understood they're travelling with an American friend. The Department of Foreign Affairs says it is providing consular assistance to the family. This is obviously must be very worrying for the families involved uh, when we do send our young men and women overseas to enjoy that adventure holiday. Uh, they invite an element of risk and this is um, really quite distressing. I understand that one of the, the individuals has a medical condition uh, that would need ongoing care. So um, I'm, I, I share concerns of all Western Australians in terms of their welfare. Family here in Perth are hoping to fly out to Mexico as soon as possible. We'll continue to bring you updates throughout the day. States and territories have two months to accept a landmark deal on the table from the federal government that would see billions of dollars spent on hospitals. But as Bent Downey reports, the deal has some strings attached. The federal government says its offer of an extra $4 billion for state and territory hospitals in 2025 is a fairer deal for all. But in return, it's asking for more money from the states to help support the ballooning NDIS. These billions for hospitals will go towards addressing the intractable problem of ambulance ramping, reducing long emergency department waiting lists and getting long-term patients out of hospital and into alternative care. The federal government originally offered an extra $2 billion in 2025 to do this, but premiers and chief ministers didn't sign on. Now that figure has been doubled to four, with a total $13 billion on top of planned spending by 2030. When you consider hospital costs made up $30 billion in just last year's budget alone, it adds up to a lot. These negotiations began in December during National Cabinet and now pressure is mounting for states and territories to sign on before the June 30 deadline. It was a very significant offer. I mean, I, I really emphasise this was a landmark offer that the Prime Minister made to the states in December as part of a broader deal. Because this funding wouldn't arrive until 2025, doctors' groups say even more money is required in this month's budget to stop wait times growing worse. Next week's state budget will include $8 million to try to transform the way mental health emergencies are handled. A person experiencing a mental health crisis at home will soon have access to a combination of virtual care and a mobile response team. Those teams will consist of a paramedic and a mental health practitioner. St John's Ambulance can put them in the hands of the WAVE, uh, the wave team to make sure that person can uh, receive early advice, but also so a mental health practitioner can continue to assess that person and make sure that we have the services they need when, when and if they turn up to the emergency department. It's hoped the program will reduce unnecessary admissions to emergency departments and reduce ambulance ramping, which has dropped by 27 per cent in the six months to March. Mourners will gather in the central west of New South Wales today to farewell Molly Ticehurst, who was allegedly murdered by her ex-partner. The 28-year-old was found inside her home last week. Her funeral will be held at the local rugby ground this afternoon. New South Wales Premier Chris Minns, who is considering reforming the state's bail laws, will also attend Molly's funeral. Miss Ticehurst's former partner Daniel Billings has been charged with murder and is currently in custody. 
Melbourne has shown its support for victims and survivors of domestic violence as the nation mourns at least 26 women killed by men this year alone. The city's landmarks were lit up in purple overnight, as Tegan Dolling reports. 60 landmarks across Melbourne were lit up in purple last night, including down here at Flinders Street Station, just across the road at Federation Square, and even venues like the MCG, all because of Domestic Violence Remembrance Day. There was also candlelight vigils held right across Australia for the 26 alleged domestic violence victims who have died so far this year. That's 11 more than at the same time last year. The federal government held their emergency cabinet meeting $925 million going towards domestic violence programs, including the $5,000 that will be for domestic violence victims to help rebuild their lives. National Cabinet also uh, particularly focused and is working now on how to address early intervention for high-risk perpetrators. Uh, what are the uh, consequences, things like uh, bail laws? And the AFL will also pay tribute to the victims this round. They'll be holding vigils before the start of all nine matches. And those AFL clubs have thrown their support behind a push from the Eagles CEO to make that stand against domestic violence during this week's round of matches. Brooke Comerford has the details. Good morning, Lockie. Well, West Coast boss Don Pike is leading the charge and he wants his club to take leadership on this crisis. He penned a letter to the AFL to see what they could do to support. He said he's been heartened by the response with the announcement Round 8 will be dedicated to taking a stand against gender-based violence. It comes in the middle of the growing crisis across the country. So Round 8 will see all 18 clubs making a commitment to do more. Players, coaches and umpires will link arms in the centre of the ground before their games to pay a silent tribute to women who have lost their lives. And it is a blockbuster round attracting plenty of attention starting with tonight's showdown between Adelaide and Port Adelaide before the Eagles take on Essendon right here at Optus Stadium on Saturday. Lockie. Hundreds of residents have been left in the dark after two cars collided into power lines in Perth's south. Police say a Nissan Ute collided into a power transformer around one this morning. It happened on Mortimer Road in Casuarina. The vehicle rolled, sending power lines onto the road, forcing a Mitsubishi Triton to smash into the broken infrastructure. Both drivers escaped uninjured. Visitors to some of the country's most popular pubs and clubs are being warned their personal information may have been shared in an online data leak. As Liam Tapper reports, more than a million people are at risk of identity theft. Well, criminals on the dark web are claiming that they have launched the latest cyber attack on a number of citizens here in Australia. New South Wales clubs seem to be the target with more than one million people who checked into either pubs, clubs or restaurants. The targets and having their sensitive information allegedly leaked onto the dark web. The information that they say they have a hold of are things like signatures, home addresses and driver's licence and then they say that they are willing to sell it on the black market. Last night, Clubs New South Wales held an emergency meeting to discuss their plan of attack and say that they are working with cyber security experts to try and see if these claims are in fact legitimate. New South Wales police are also launching an investigation into the claims and to try and find who is responsible. This is on the upper end of breaches. We're potentially looking at things like biometric data, addresses, names, photographs, uh, even signatures. And a lot of this information can be very valuable if you're attempting to launch an identity fraud attack. Um, so it is one that is obviously quite concerning. At this stage, there are 20 clubs who have had their data breached. Most of them are in Sydney, some though in the Hunter Valley, the Central Coast and also on the Mid-North Coast. While the full list of people who have been impacted is not clear, a number of prominent politicians are said to have had their data compromised. This breach is the latest in a string of data breaches to happen here in Australia. Just yesterday, Qantas's system was hacked by alleged cyber criminals. Clubs New South Wales have issued a warning to any of their members or any patrons who may have visited their clubs, pubs or venues recently to make sure any texts or emails they receive are legitimate ones and any links that they are clicking on are the right ones because the consequences can be dire if they are not. 
The Sydney home has been targeted in a drive-by shooting overnight. Three people were in the house at St Helens Park at around seven last night when the gunman opened fire. They all escaped injury. Witnesses told police he sped off in a dark-coloured sedan. It's the fourth time in a week that a house has been shot at in Sydney's southwest. Uni students in Perth have joined a global protest in solidarity with Palestine. Several hundred held a rally at Curtin University campus yesterday. The Students for Palestine group is calling for Curtin to cut ties with industry partners like Lockheed Martin that have helped supply weapons to the Israel Defence Force. The city of Perth has declared war on tree vandals. The Fed Up Council increased fines to help cover the cost of replacing trees. Last year, 45 trees had to be removed and replaced. So far this year, 23 have been destroyed. On average, it costs almost $7,000 to replace each plant. The city has boosted the maximum penalty from $500 to $5,000. You're watching Seven's morning news live from Perth. Still to come, the road to nowhere, a deadly highway collapse in China. And disgraced movie producer Harvey Weinstein back in court after his rape conviction was overturned. Seven News doesn't just bring you the news. The man in the back of that police car was arrested right here on the side of busy Billia Drive. This is where news breaks. Breaking news from the royal family now. The king has just returned to official duties. Know the news first on 7 News. Welcome back. Police are this morning hunting a man who reportedly tried to lure three primary school kids into a white van in Forestfield. The van apparently said free candy on the side. The man is described as Caucasian with a gold tooth, a brown buzz cut, and he was wearing a navy beanie and cargo pants. Police say the van has about four bumper stickers on the back and a roof rack. A former police officer has been identified as one of two people killed in a shocking crash inside a Brisbane tunnel. Bruce Daly, aged in his 50s, is understood to have left the force around a decade ago. The other victim was a woman aged in her 20s. The legacy tunnel at Kelvin Grave was closed in both directions as the wreckage was cleared and police investigated. Harvey Weinstein is set to be retried in New York later this year, appearing in court for the first time since his rape conviction was overturned last week. On appeal, a judge was found to have prejudiced the Hollywood producer at a trial with improper rulings. Defence lawyers say they're relieved. They now have a new chance to fight those allegations. We're very confident that if it goes to trial, the only words we'll hear at the end of the trial are not guilty. Manhattan prosecutors say they are committed to retrying the case. The 72-year-old remains in jail for sex assault convictions in California. America's top foreign diplomat says if Hamas wants to end the suffering of the Palestinian people in Gaza, it will accept a ceasefire deal. Antony Blinken says Israel has made important compromises in negotiations, leaving it up to the terror group to come to an agreement. Hamas has to decide uh, whether it will take this deal um, and actually advance uh, the uh, situation for the people that it purports to care about uh, in Gaza. The U.S. Secretary of State made his seventh tour of the Middle East since the Gaza war broke out in October. Teachers and students have paid tribute to a 14-year-old schoolboy killed in the East London sword rampage. This morning, a 36-year-old man was charged with his murder, along with two counts of attempted murder. Ashley Mullaney reports. It was a truly horrific attack in East London yesterday and we have now learnt that one of the victims was just 14 years old, Daniel Andron, on his way to school when he was attacked by a stranger with a sword and killed. There was 20 minutes of sheer terror in this suburban street and it only came to an end when a single officer armed with a taser took this man down, but not before he caused severe injuries to two other officers, injuries that the police chief says could take months, if not years, to recover from.
I saw the inspector whose hand's badly damaged. He's got sort of a lot of patching up to be done on his hand, um, really serious injuries there. And I was talking to the um, family and colleagues of the um, uh, of the officer, woman officer who's really badly damaged arm, really seriously damaged, and the, the surgeon spent sort of many, many hours sort of basically putting her arm back together. Only a third of frontline officers here are equipped with tasers. Scotland Yard says it is now reviewing off the back of this incident whether more officers should be given tasers as part of their police kit. At least 24 people have died when a mountainside highway collapsed in China. 30 others were injured when the 18 metre long section of the expressway suddenly crumbled beneath them. The collapse followed days of heavy rain and caused 20 vehicles to topple into a deep muddy pit. Stay with us on 7 Sport is coming up after the break as the Blues welcome back a key player to take on Collingwood. And a big win for the Central Coast Mariners, securing the Premier's plate for a third time. Seven News knows Perth. Headlines flash by all day. But to know the news, watch Seven News at six o'clock. And here's why. Our reporters are news breakers. The man in the back of that police car was arrested right here on the side of busy Billia Drive. With more exclusive reports. That dig deeper. And demand answers. We commit to travel to wherever the stories happen, even the front line. Chris Reason from Channel 7 Australia. As international news unfolds in Europe. We're live to you at 6 p.m. Breaking down the global issues that matter back home in Perth. Seven News understands that... Our reporters travel from suburb to suburb. It happened at Point Walter... ...and across our state to bring you the news. This show only in June. July. This is the team we trust. And thank you... ...for trusting Seven News. Welcome back. Carlton coach Michael Voss is tapping into the history of his side's fierce rivalry with Collingwood, leading into tomorrow night's MCG blockbuster. Midfielder Adam Chera returns from a hamstring strain for the Blues. 90,000 fans are expected to pack out the stands. We've had some more recent history um, with them in the last couple of years and they've been able to go on and experience the ultimate and we haven't, so we're still chasing us a lot. Um, but we also acknowledge that the game and the rivalry that exists and, um, and we're looking forward to it. Port Adelaide skipper Connor Rosie is named to take on the Crows despite injuring his hamstring just six days ago. The showdown is live on 7 and 7 mate tonight. Reigning A-League champion Central Coast have won their third Premier's plate. The Mariners defeated Adelaide United 2-0 to secure top spot on the ladder heading into the finals. Central Coast finished the regular season two points ahead of Wellington Phoenix. The Mariners are also in the final of the AFC Cup. They take on Lebanon's Al Ahed in Oman on Monday. Kylian Mbappe's PSG lost 1-0 to Borussia Dortmund in the first leg of their Champions League semi-final. Mbappe went agonisingly close to equalising for the French champions in the second half, but Dortmund held on and could have easily scored a second goal. The return leg is in Paris next week. Aussie Boomers veteran Paddy Mills and his Miami Heat have crashed out of the NBA playoffs. Paddy Mills with a little teardrop. That stops an 11-0 Boston run. Title favourites, the Celtics dominated the Heat in Game 5 of their first round series. Boston won 118 to 84 to wrap up the best of seven series, four games to one. I'll have all your weather details next on Seven's Morning News. See you after the break. Checking the weather now, it's currently 25 degrees in our city. We're expecting a possible thunderstorm this afternoon. Rain expected right across our suburbs. 27 for Joondalup and Midland. Slightly cooler along our coast. It'll reach 25 degrees in Mandra. And for the rest of the week, a light shower or two in 
tomorrow morning, 23 the top. Then it clears for the weekend. A partly cloudy 23 degrees on Saturday, mostly sunny and 21 on Sunday. Blue skies for the start of next week. Then it will reach 23 on Tuesday and 24 degrees for next Wednesday. That's Seven's morning news for this Thursday. Thanks for your company. Stay with us. We'll have the latest updates right across the afternoon. And of course, in our main bulletins at four and six o'clock, I'm Lockie Byrne. Enjoy the rest of your day.